Please subscribe to Apple Bean Fan TV. Hello Red Army, welcome back to another video and in this video I'm building up to the Aberdeen vs Rijeka game tomorrow night in the Europa League third qualifying round second leg match at Pitodre. And going into this game obviously I know we've got a mountain to climb. It's not going to be easy is it, you know, with the 2-0 defeat last week over in Croatia to Rijeka. Coming into the second leg here, it is only half time in the tie but... Um, it's asking a lot, isn't it, you know, to try and come back from this. And with our main man, Sam Cosgrove, top goal scorer so far this season, out injured, which I'll get on to that later. So, coming into this game off the back of two poor defeats, obviously a last week in Croatia and against St Mirren at the weekend down in Paisley. And I don't know what that's going to do for our momentum going into this game. It could have a mental effect on us. I don't think it should, but because we need to go into this game thinking we don't have anything to lose. Because with 2-0 down, um, the one thing this actually does remind me on is the Liverpool-Barcelona game in the Champions League semi-final last year. Where Liverpool were down 3-0 going into the game at Anfield. And everyone was saying going into the game that it was going to be impossible, you know, they were going to need a miracle. And they did it, you know, 4-0, uh, 4-0 victory. And Greg Lee said it perfectly um, the other day. He says we need to use the Liverpool inspiration to help us on, which is perfectly right in my opinion. I think that um, to have any chance, we obviously know that it's definitely not impossible. We are very capable of scoring, what, two or three goals against this Vierka team. But the thing that does worry me is we are very capable of conceding a couple of goals against this Vierka team. Because I don't think they played necessarily well last week. I didn't think we played well at all. I think we were. I think they just played out and not as bad as us on the night, and that's really what won them the game. I don't think two 0 was a really a, a fair result looking back at it. I think one 0 fair enough, two one fair enough, but um, I think two 0 It's obviously the tie's not over, but um, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how we do it, how we set up. In this fixture because obviously we're going to need the Pataudry atmosphere to get right behind us in this game as I'm assuming it will I'm assuming it's going to be a good atmosphere tomorrow night I think that we, we definitely need it because you know we need all the help we can get going, going into this and if we can get behind the boys it might um, have an effect on the Rijeka players I don't know but um, they had a good atmosphere last week over in Croatia maybe that affected us maybe it didn't um, it looked like it affected us by the, by the way we performed on the pitch but it really shouldn't have, and I'm not sure it'll affect the Rijeka team as well. So um, the fans, I'm assuming, will do their part. It's just to see if the players can do it as well. And now getting on to that Sam Cosgrove injury, Derek McInnes came out and said in his press conference, because I didn't want to do the match build-up until after the press conference to see if Sam Cosgrove was going to be fit. And it's turned out he isn't. He's not going to be fit for the game. He's not going to be t able to feature at all, not even on the bench, which... Um, it's a worry for us, isn't it? Because there was not really any word on this before the St Mirren game on Sunday because obviously he played the full 90 minutes last Thursday and there didn't really seem to be any problems with him at that point. So maybe he picked it up in the game, maybe he picked it up in training. I don't think he picked it up in the warm-up in the game because an hour before the game, before the teams had come out for the warm-up against St Mirren, it was Curtis Main and McLennan to start up front. So I don't think it would have been in the warm up because we would have heard we would it would have been Costco to start or feature in the team at least and um they would and McLennan or Mame would have been on the bench and then if that was gonna happen in the pre match warm up, the Cosgrove would have probably been in the starting eleven and then he would have been dropped out after. So it's definitely gonna be hard without him. You know, he's got he's our top scorer, he scored two goals in the league. I think he scored six, is it? Six goals in no seven goals in Europe, I think it is. Or is it six? It's one or the other. So um, the last game against Rijeka, that was the first game this season he didn't score. So obviously he couldn't feature on the, ma on the match on Sunday. So getting into my preferred 11s now, it's going to be very interesting to see who I pick, who actually gets picked by McInnes. And it, because we've definitely got a few holes in this team that need to be filled. And it's going to be interesting to see what McInnes does. So in goal, I'm going to go for Joe Lewis, the captain. Obviously, he's nailed on to start. The back four is going to be right back, Shay Logan. Left back is going to be Greg Lee, obviously. And the two centre backs are going for Scott McKenna. Haven't gone for Andrew Constant, I've gone for Mikey Devlin. He didn't start at the weekend, you know, could easily see Constant there, could easily see Zach Viner there. I think that's probably the more likely choice. Um, 
Well, McKenna will definitely be starting. It's just a toss up between if it's going to be Considine. Devlin might not be fit enough, but I think he's probably the better option to play. Uh, or Zach Viner because he played at the weekend, so he actually played it right back at the weekend. So it's going to be very interesting to see how McKenna sets up. The two in midfield, I'm going to go for Lewis Ferguson and Funso Ojo, um, two main centre mids that we've had. Craig Bryson won't be able to make it again. It's going to be, I think, the main re one of the main reasons he came to play at Pataudry is because he wanted to play in the European fixtures. And this might be our last fixture in Europe this season anyway, which hopefully it isn't because I've got us, I actually do have faith that we can bring it back. So hopefully that he will get a game in Europe when he's uh, back for match fit. I don't know if he'll even be on the bench because um, the, he's only ever played in the Shakira match for us away from home. So obviously that was a game in Europe, but I'm assuming he wants to play one at Pataudry. So he hasn't actually featured, I don't think, at Pataudry yet. So up front, I'm going to go for, no, actually on the wing, sorry. I'm going to go for Niall McGinn and Ryan Hedges, I think they're probably nailed on to start. Ryan Hedges, definitely. He's looked one of our best performers alongside Sam Cosgrove and some other players at the start of the season. He's been very consistent, so he'll definitely start on the right-hand side, probably, because him and McGinn are right, whoever's on that side. They like to change during the match, so on the left mid, I'm going to go for a nine on McGinn. It could be Scott Wright playing on that wing, but I think um, McGinn will play there. Or it could be Conor McLennan playing on one of the wings, but I think... Uh, we need McGinn's experience in this game to try and try and help us because he's done this before. Not necessarily coming back from a, a margin like this, but um, having experience in Europe. And he, and he played against Rijeka a few years ago. Not that that really means anything just now, but um, McGinn's experience could be helpful in this match. And now up front, I'm going to go for John Gallagher, obviously. I think he's probably nailed on to start as well. Um, the other striker would normally be occupied by Sam Cosgrove, but obviously he's not going to be able to play in this match. So it could it could be a few players here. You know, we could see James Wilson play there. We could see Curtis Main play there. We could see Conor McLennan play there. Um, Stevie May even, but that's very unlikely though. Um, we could see just one striker play up front for John Gallagher. But I think in a game like this, when we're 2-0 down, we have to go for it. Um, so I'm assuming McInnes will play two up front. I think he should play two up front because that's a more attacking option. Unless he wants to go for a 4-2-3-1 formation, where we could really see, obviously, Ojo and Ferguson playing in the deeper role, and we could also see John Gallagher maybe playing in the cam, and then James Wilson up front with the two wingers, but I don't think he'll do that, because what's the point in it? Just go with two up front, which I think it's going to be, obviously, John Gallagher and either James Wilson, Curtis Main, Conor McLennan, but in my preferred 11, I'm going to go for James Wilson. He has had a few howlers early in the season. He's missed a few big chances. I think we can all agree on that. Um, I'd obviously had that game last last year against Celtic at Pataudry where he should have had a hat trick in about half an hour. But once he gets his confidence back, it's a lot like Sam Cosgrove because before his goal scoring streak in December last year, he was in the same position as James Wilson. You know, he was a bit afraid to shoot, and um, he wasn't getting a lot of game time, and it. And it took him until he was getting a couple of goals in a row. You know, he was scoring He was scoring about three games in a row. It's, it took him to, to get his form. And if James Wilson can do that, this is the match where he needs to make his mark. I thought that if he, if he was going to do that, it would be at the weekend or against Hearts where he started. And he, didn't, he wasn't able to make his mark. But maybe that's because he had Cosgrove alongside him against Hearts. Maybe they're too similar. Um, they're both very tall players. I don't think they're really that similar in my opinion, but I think that James Wilson will have a chance to express himself in this match where hopefully he'll we'll have, he'll pick up a few chances and hopefully we can take him because the one thing that we do have to do in this game, I think we have to score before half-time. I think that um, that's quite important because we don't want to go in the second half realising like we'll have to get two goals in the second half and, you know, they could easily get us in the counter-attack. It wouldn't be the end of the world at that point, but put it this way, I'd rather be 1-0 up after 70 minutes than 2-1 two, then two one up at half-time, if you know what I mean. Because because if we're 2-1 up, then that means we have to score another two goals, I think it is. But um, we, can't, we can't concede early on because then we have to score four. And we can score four, but it's going to be very difficult for us. It's a lot to ask without our main striker. And obviously Liverpool went through that same thing in the Champions League semi-final, missing Salah Firmino. 
but um, you know we're not European royalty like Liverpool, Aberdeen at this moment in time. You know, um, so it's going to be difficult. I think we can all say it's definitely going to be difficult. But now I'm moving on to my score prediction, and a lot of people have been actually asking me recently, "You do a preferred eleven? Why don't you do a preferred score prediction?" Because if I did a preferred score prediction, I would predict like thirty nil every game. So there's not really any point in that, is there? So my preferred, well, my score prediction is going to be Aberdeen 2, Rijeka 0, which means it's going to go to extra time and I think it's going to go to penalties. I could definitely see this game going all the way and I think Aberdeen will win, will win on penalties, 4-3 on pens because you have to go into this game being confident because, you know, if you, if you just think you're going to turn up to Pataudry to see Aberdeen get knocked out of Europe, what's the point in all fairness? Um... So I think I'm not sure how many Aberdeen fans will genuinely believe. I don't know if I genuinely believe. That's I'm not sure if that's my head or my heart saying that. I think it's a mostly my heart, a bit of my head, because I think that um, Rijeka are there for the taking. I don't think they're the team they were in 2015, and I think we're, our team at this moment in time is deba debatably better. Obviously, we are missing our main man Sam Cosgrove, but I think we can do it. Let me know down in the comments if you think we can. Obviously, it's we haven't made it easy for ourselves with the performance last week, the two 0 result. But yeah, I'm not confident. I'm not that that confident. But you know, I've I've got hope. I have hope that we can do it. Okay, so thank you guys for watching this video. Click the like button down below if you've enjoyed it. I will be doing a match vlog for the Rijeka match, so you've got that to look forward to. So subscribe if you're new to Aberdeen Fan TV, and hopefully the next time I see you, Aberdeen will have pulled it back and got through to the playoff round of the Europa League. Until next time, everyone stand free. Goodbye.